Hey everyone, thanks a lot for taking a look at this video today. I really love making VFX scenes in DaVinci Resolve. The Fusion page just offers so many possibilities for us. In this asteroid scene, it's short, but it was created fully in DaVinci Resolve. To put this together, you're going to need to download an FBX file of a single asteroid. And it has the FBX, it has a bunch of textures, and it's easy to apply. I'm going to show you that in a second, how to put this into your project. And then we're going to apply a whole bunch of different effects. And at the end, I've got some really cool effects that make this thing pop. So be sure to check that out. We're going to make this really cool scene right here. And we can add different logos or titles into the scene if we'd like. It is a 3D scene, so it's really easy to add or take away things. Hey guys, if you're new checking me out, please take a minute to subscribe to this channel. And I've got a new graphic here, and I got this from my friends at Motion VFX. They have the MTuber 2 set, and it's got a whole bunch of cool graphics. If you guys are a YouTube channel and you're looking to promote your videos, they've got titles, they've got uh, different animations for YouTube, specifically backgrounds, all kinds of pointers and things like that in this set. A link for that product is in the description. And if you're checking this out right now, November of 2021, They've got a pretty good sale going on for Black Friday and the end of the year. So check that out right now. To get started with your asteroid, you're going to need to download the FBX set. It's completely free and it'll help you get started following along with this video. Let's jump right in. You can see this scene looks like there is a lot going on, but really we only have one 3D object in here and we're creating this VFX with just a few different effects that we built onto the node system in Fusion. So jumping over to the Fusion page, this is my node structure, and it's really not too bad. And so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna need to download the asteroid, and that's an FBX file, and it's gonna be zipped when you get it. You're gonna need to unzip it into a place where you can find it, and it's gonna give you basically these five files. There's Asteroid 2, and there's a diffuse normal roughness and specular texture. And all you're gonna to need to do is import in this Asteroid 2 FBX, and Fusion will set up all of the textures for you automatically, which is really fantastic. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go up here to Fusion, Import, FBX Scene, so all we need is the Asteroid 2 FBX, open that, and you're gonna be prompted with this dialog box and we can add some different options. And make sure that if you have animation checked on here, turn that off. You can bring the camera in if you'd like. Um, we're not gonna use it though, we'll create our own camera. And if you do have lights in your FBX scene, it will bring those in. And depending on the software program that you're using, they may or may not work. Just a heads up there. So once you get the settings that you'd like, this really doesn't matter. We're not bringing in any animation, so the frames per second doesn't really matter. Hit OK. So Fusion created this really nice node structure for us, and it automatically attached all the texture nodes and so that's what we're seeing down here in this portion of the node tree. So I'll delete that out since it's already in my tree here. The next thing that I put in here was a transform node. I didn't actually end up using it, so you can omit that if you'd like. But an important node that you need to have is this duplicate 3D node. And let's go ahead and click on that with the inspector open. What we have is basically some different settings here. We're going to duplicate this, this asteroid. And in my case, I added 44 copies of the original asteroid. And if we go to jitter here, you can see my translation jitter and my rotation jitter. Some of these settings are changed from the defaults. These settings, what you're saying is, I'm going to spread this asteroid out in the X direction and in the Y direction and the Z direction to create a field of asteroids. And let me pull my Merge 3D up here. And 
for now. I will turn this one off. Just give me one second. Okay, so if we look in the middle of this scene, we can see all of those asteroids creating a field in here. And that's what these settings are doing. So what I used is 339.6 for the X, 251 for the Y, and 388 in the positive direction for the Z. You can play with those how you'd like and set up your own asteroid field the way you'd like to see it. And with this Y, what I'm doing is I'm rotating randomly the different asteroids so they're not all facing the same direction. So I added a rotation of 12 there. And then the Z, this adds a animated rotation in the Z direction. When you saw that original video, it looked like this. And you can see those asteroids rotating as we pass through there. And to get that, you have to... You have to apply an animation to that. And so what I did was I used an animation curve and I just scaled it to 180, time scale of one, and let it rotate throughout this full timeline. So that's pretty simple to do. And to add that animation curve, you just right click on here and you say modify with animation curve it's showing up as grayed out because I already have it applied I can remove it here so if we add that you'll get that animated rotation pretty simple and so that's the asteroid field part and let's go back to this merge 3d we'll look at this overall let me turn this node back on okay so this is my overall 3d setup the parts of this 3D setup you can see are the asteroids in the middle here. I have a camera on the right and I have two lights, one on the right and one on the left. And in the scene, you can see there's a lot of backlight and this is the light that's doing it. You can see it's got a large umbrella to kind of diffuse and spread that light out throughout the scene. I have another softer light here, kind of at the camera view and you can see we get some light on the faces of some of these asteroids here if they're not getting blocked. So that adds that part of the light. And then these little pieces in the middle is, is fog layers to get some of that, those rays and reflection of those rays. I'll cover that just in a second, but I have five layers there and that gives it kind of this space dust out here. Obviously we're not going to see fog in space but we will see dust particles and other things like that. And that really makes that scene pop in my opinion. And I think it really is effective in this case. So I looked at using 3D fog in the case of this scene. And I think this method looked a little bit better. So I scrapped the 3D fog and I used these layers, kind of these plates. So that gave it some different depth and reflection of the rays. And so looking at it head on, it just kind of looks like a diffusion of fog and it's picking up that light. And then from the side, you can see it's just planes there basically. So like I said, there is a light in the background here. That's this one. And if we look at it, you know, I have it back in space and just positioning it to provide some light for the camera. And I did provide a little bit of a blue tint color to that. And that's what you can really see in the scene is that blueness. So the decay type, I wanted to use a linear. I bumped the intensity quite a bit up 55.94 and added some drop off and made a pretty big umbrella there for that diffusion and a really low decay rate. And that's about it for that light. And the second spotlight pull that off and you can see it is the one here by the camera and this is to add a little bit of light to the front of those those asteroids and you can see this one I actually used a higher intensity there 222 as I'm trying to shoot some light further back into the scene uh, to look at some of these asteroids further out in space but I did have a lot larger decay rate and the cone angle was was also bigger and the drop off was set down way down at one. The umbrella was also set at one. So it's kind of more of a narrower light passing through there. 
and I matched the color of the first light just to be consistent. And I think it looked really good with the scene. I tried some different colors and this looked a lot more natural to me for the scene itself. I added a camera and you can see if we watch this camera, it starts back in the scene and then it's going to move into the asteroid field and pass through the first set of fog screen here. And so that animation was applied into the transform. You can see that Z value just changes throughout the scene. I don't want to make it move too much. It's really moving slow. Just keep that in mind. I don't want to pass through really fast. Okay, let's look at the fog now. And all I did was I added a background and that's this node right here. And then I added a fast noise. So the background went into the fast noise and I adjusted some settings slightly and made the scale a little bit bigger than the default. And I didn't do any animation on the C. There's no rate there. I did just kind of change the C just because I didn't like the original look. And there's no color on this. It's just default, basically black and transparent. So this background node, as you saw, this was black. And then with this image plane, uh, basically this is a billboard. So it is an image plane 3D right there. And I just piped in that fast noise image into the image plane and positioned it at the start here. This is the original plane right there. And then I created a duplicate 3D and I moved it back in the Z direction with five copies total. That includes the original image plane. And then I have a Z offset here about 1,354. And that moved it back in space there. What I basically did was cover the extent of the asteroid field. You can see the back one is just beyond the last set of asteroids. And that's really what you want. You want some one more last diffuse screen in the very back there. Okay, so to, to finish out the scene, we add a render 3D, and I use the camera that I'd set up for my rendering. I used an OpenGL render. This has a, it's kind of old, it's got a 960 GTX in it, so uh, that's really it. I didn't output any of the additional channels because I'm just looking for the RGBA video. And then to make this scene really pop, let me show you in the left side. So the render is going to look something like this. Originally what I did is I added a space scene behind here, just an image into the edit page and then laid this on top. It looked pretty good, but then I started playing around with the lighting and then I add this rays, this final node, the rays, it goes from this to that by adding the rays. And a lot of that was those kind of those five diffuse screens that I placed in the scene really made this pop with the lighting. And the settings on that, you can see I have a really low decay and I jumped the weight up on the rays quite a bit and bumped the exposure way down and the threshold way down. If you pop these up too much, you're gonna get something really crazy. Let me show you. Get just really overdone on the light or you can get too many streaks. And so you got to really have a soft touch on that to give it that cloud look and pick up uh, just enough of those rays where you're picking up the light and it's giving you those cool rays from the backlighting, which I thought really turned out great. And then I just go out to the media out and that's what we see on the edit page. So it's pretty simple to put this together. So in the description of this video is a link to download that asteroid and it's going to be zipped. So make sure you unzip it and then you can go ahead and import the FBX file and start creating your own asteroid field. And you can add 3D text in here, 3D logos, whatever you want into the scene if you want to do something for an opening or for your logo. And it really, it really creates a great effect. Hey, thanks for checking out this space scene in DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully you guys learned a few things along the way. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll take a look and hopefully get those answered for you. I appreciate your time today watching this. Take care, everybody.